<laughs> Welcome back to game two of the semi-finals. We're re-recording this introduction because the first one was terrible. And I've got Lewis here who's going to have a look at both deck lists and try and figure out what they may have sideboarded in and out. All right, before I get to that, I'm going to... Well, I've got Luke's deck, deck list up. This is the first time I've had a look at his list. He's got one Gather Courage. I love that so much. It's, it, it, it's so out of the blue. One but gather carry. When you think about it, it makes so much sense. Now, um, now his his sideboard is three Drowning Sorrow, two Sorin, one Hero's Downfall, one Nissa, two Elspeth, three Vax Nature, three Glare of Heresy. I reckon Glare of Heresy um, is in contention to come in because Trent's got a few white permanents that are good to, good to answer. Yeah, um, Sorin, yep. Wingmate Rock, and Butcher. Yeah, and even even secret the way, as well. Um, I, I'm not sure if he's a, a turn three rebel master, as yeah. well. The token blocked by the fleece main line. And I reckon like maybe just up the number of heroes down falls. Uh, I'm not sure if you if he brings in Elspeth for this matchup. He might. He might not. Uh, just depends on whether or not he wants to go up in his curve or. Just continue just being aggressive. I believe that's a hero's downfall being left on top of Luke's deck. All right. Now, as far as Trent goes, he's got uh, in his sideboard. He's got one arrays, one chains of the rocks, two glare of heresy, three anger of the gods, two read the bones, a chandra, two end hostilities, Sark and Elspeth, and an utter end. Now, um, look, I. Uh, he, I think he brings in his end facilities, and maybe even anger of the gods. Fleece main lion bites the dust to a crackling yep. doom. Um, anger of the gods, yeah, he probably doesn't bring it in, but I think he thinks about it at the very least. Sure, sure. Yeah. And rebel master comes in for some beats, putting loot to thirteen in quick time, taking two from the crackling doom as well, of course. Now that's a very powerful start for Trent. Uh, Rebel Master, if left uncontested, can just seal the game so quickly. It builds up so fast in damage. Now in Luke's hand I can see a Nissa World Waker. A Sea Drone, is that? Or is that a Wingmate Rock? I think it's an Elspeth. Uh, he's, got, he's got a few lands in there as well. Now, I think I'm, what I'm seeing is... Uh, it's it's hard to, it's hard to actually make out what he's got in his hand mm. uh, beyond the Nissa. I think the second last card is a hero's downfall. Yep. That's what we're going to see now on the Rebel Master. Don't want to get that. You don't want to let that Rebel Master get too far out of control. They can do a lot of damage very very quickly. And he plays a Scryland, and that's a Death Deal. Yes. Would you leave that on top? I. Look, he did, and who, who am I to argue with him? But um, I, I think um, it's good to have. I didn't see how many lands he has in hand, so. And Trent um, goes with the single goblin beatdown plan. Yeah, it's good to get have another cheap, uh, another cheap threat, um, and it's better than drawing a land in this situation. Now, Trent noticeably did not draw or play a land in his turn. He does have a chain to the rocks in hand, so he's got a bit of defense for anything that might come out that's not planeswalkery. Yeah, he can clear a blocker from his uh, goblin token. And that's definitely a siege rhino in Luke's hand there as well. So we might see the siege rhino. Nope. He's going to see the death dealer that he left on top from the scry. I think, I think that's good, and that's a reason to keep it on top, because... He, he can pass the turn right here and have three mana up um, to either activate Death Dealer's ability or to just represent a trick. Sure. And it's Crackling Doom to the Death Dealer. So dealing another two to Luke, putting him down to ten. He's really getting the damage in. That, that back Goblin and the Crackling Dooms backing it up are really putting in the work. The issue is the, the land drops, missing the land drops. Yeah. And um, that's, yeah you can only do so much with three mana. And as we know, there's a, a Siege Rhino, which yep. is coming out right now, which is going to restore, you know, three turns of that that Goblin attacking for one. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's almost like three time walks. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got another crackling doom. While Trent's really, um, at least he's still got plays. Um, yep. If you're going to be stuck on three mana, at least you at least want to have something to do. If you're going to be stuck on three mana, at least have three crackling dooms and a uh, chain of the rocks in hand. And a goblin token that you can keep attacking with. <laughs> Puts it, putting Luke back to nine yet again. All right, he's got Luke on a nine turn clock, so we'll see. We'll see how this pans out. And he's got his fourth land. Now he mustn't have Butcher of the Horden in his hand because he would have put that out prior to attacking, so he could have attacked with uh, sacrificing the goblin, and giving it haste. Yes, and the fact that he didn't make a play there tells me that the fourth land wasn't necessarily the one that he wants, but he wants his fifth land. So a lot of five drops in his hand. Well, his deck has some powerful five drops. It has uh, Sarkin, it has Wingmate Rock, um, and he he's, obviously, he's got, looks like he's got Soap Flames in hand. And we see um, the fetch land getting a forest, putting Luke to eight. I think we might see a Nissa World Waker here. I reckon so. Or will it be the El no? It'll be the Elspeth because yeah, it gives right. him instant blockers. And also, he needs the second green to play this in the first place. Yes. Um, now Trent's been kind enough to lend him three soldier tokens. I don't know if I'd be so quite kind in the semi-finals <laughs> one game down <laughs> oh, Trent is pretty generous with his tokens and you see uh, Luke bouncing there I believe they've got some music playing in the background obviously we've uh, erased all the sound from the day so we can commentate over the top of it But both players requested uh, some music, and so I think that went on. Uh, Trent sacking the fetch land, going to 13. Yeah, uh, probably getting a swamp, I would say, based on what these other lands are. But he's definitely got an issue now with uh, that Elspeth on the board. Uh, yes, yes he does. He's got a stoke flames in hand, we know that. He's got... Change of the rock, change of the rocks. But Stoke doesn't deal with Elspeth; only put her onto one. So we need to need to have a hero's downfall. He needs to somehow clear those blockers so he can deal that last point of damage with his goblin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anger of the gods. No, we're stoking. Oh, we're stoking straight to the face. So okay. he's going for the. He's just oh. going for the win. The the end step Stoke. Well, at, at this point in the game. So if he um, top decked a Stoke there, it would have been game over? Yes, and I think he was hoping to do that. Um, he might have something like Lightning Strike in hand or something like along those lines. Yeah. Playing a Temple. Trying to find that extra extra burn. I think he's decided... Or even a Wingmate Rock would be nice. Attack with the token, cast the Wingmate Rock. That would be pretty amazing right now. I, th I think he's decided um, to ignore the Elspeth because... Um, he can't deal with it fast enough, so he might as well just try and send whatever he can at Luke's face. I also don't think he's got Hero's Downfall in his list. No. Um, it doesn't look like he's got it anywhere in his list. Yeah. For other end, we'll deal with it though. So that's a, that's a nice response. And he's only got the one utter end in from the sideboard. So that was a, a nice time to have that particular card. He's got him down the four. He's looking for that extra Stoke the Flames. He oh, plays he's, plays three of them in the main. He's got he's got a good selection of... Now that he's on five minor, he's got a good selection of cards he can draw. Um, he's got Sarkin. Um, he's got Stoke, as you said. He's got Butcher of the Horde, because he's got a token that, that can generate the haste. Yep. So all of these do more than four damage immediately. Yep. For, or four damage or more. Now that Wingmate Rock can be a problem, and cuts down on some of Trent's outs as far as winning on the spot. Goes. So it cuts down on the Sarkin, 
Yep. Um, and the Butcher. And the Butcher. So it leaves him with uh, Stoke the Flames. And uh, if that Wingmate Rock gets to attack next turn... Then that takes Stoke the Flames out of the equation. Because Luke starts gaining life from the yep. uh, from the attackers. So Luke on four, Trent on nine. If Luke wins, he goes through to the grand final. Trent needs to take it to game three. Now I think he might be thinking about uh, chain to the rocks on the wingmate rock to prevent the life gain. Yeah, and to stall it out and yet another turn. Yes. If that happens, does Luke attack with the second rock? With the rock token? Or does he leave it in defense in case Trent draws one of these Butcher, Sarkin type creatures to punch through the four so he's got that blocker there? I don't know. I think it's correct. I think it's probably better to leave it back if you can't kill on that turn. So there's one white. Yeah. Going to eight. Chain to the rocks. He's chaining the token. Which is handy if uh, Luke did draws something that can kill the chain to the rocks later on. And is that a the crackling doom? That's crackling doom on the other one. Crackling doom number four. Putting him to two, so that brings lightning strike into. Yep, and he's attacking with the token to put him to one. Yep. Uh, so he only needs is, to get one point of damage through. This is a very tense game. It's tight, isn't it? Now Luke can only really attack with one token here. Because if he attacks with two, um, Trent has a removal spell as an out. Yes, that's correct. Like, most of Trent's removal spells are burn spells, so he would just send them straight to the face, but... And Luke can't play a Thought Seize? No, he can't. Just trying to get a, a look at his hand. He's still got the Nissa World Waker there. He comes in with all three. And go for a Drowning Sorrow? No, uh, wing another, mate, another rock. Wingmate Rock. So still Trent needs to get a... Lightning Strike or a... He has a one-off Magma Jet in his deck. Or a Stoke the Flames. Trent's on five, so he's running out of time as well. Very, very tense. He cannot survive an attack from both of those birds. If he... Um... I know, I know Sarkin can deal with one of the birds, so he wouldn't. But then at the same time, there'd be enough attackers to um, that Trent wouldn't be able to stop all of the damage with the ground tokens. Mm. And you'd think if he drew the burn, he would have just slammed it down. Yeah. Trent's not the kind to slow play that unless he needs to think about whether or not it's correct. Like whether or not there's another factor that could stop that from being right. So he wouldn't slow play burn in this situation. So he comes through with the, <coughs> the one remaining goblin token. And Luke's not taking any chances and double blocks it. And he's, I think he's pointing at the wingmate rock and saying, I'm going to deal the damage to that. He's going to play his own rock. He's going to play his own rock. Well, that buys him another turn. Yep. And it gets the token because of the... Uh, because of the attacking goblin. And he's on four life now. And a murderous cut. Oh, that was nasty. And that was for the game. Trent extends the hand, brings Trent's day to an end, and Luke goes on to the grand final. Nice close match there. Which we will have for you as soon as you click the next link.